Hello and welcome to my clip on more advanced titration calculations. In this clip I'm going to look at percentage purity. Um, it is one of the things you'll need to be able to do at the end of your A-level course uh, to be able to work this out using titration data. So first let's look at what percentage purity might refer to. So if I have two solid samples of calcium carbonate for example, um, if you imagine that one is an impure sample of calcium carbonate, and one is a pure sample of calcium carbonate. In the impure sample, the impurity would be the section that's, um, that's shaded in red, and in the impure sample, the section that's shaded in black would be calcium carbonate, or pure calcium carbonate. So let's say I was titrating a sample of calcium carbonate that I knew was impure. Only the bit that's in black, the pure part of that impure sample, is actually going to react with my acid. So I can use that concept, that idea, to try and calculate what percentage of my block of impure car calcium carbonate is actually made of calcium carbonate. So the calculation that I use is just going to come up on the screen in a second. So it's important to remember that all your masses are in grams. So it's not kilograms, it's grams, because it's the standard unit of mass used in chemistry. So your percentage purity as a percentage, expressed as a percentage, is the mass of the pure substance divided by the mass of the impure substance, and then you multiply that by 100. So in my sample, if you looked at my impure sample, it would be the mass of the section of it that's shaded in black, uh, divided by the mass of the whole thing, the black bit and the red bit, and then you'd times that by 100. So just for argument's sake, you might find that the red bit might be something like 20%, and the black bit might, just for argument's sake, end up as something like 80%. Now obviously I'm just making a visual rough guess here. In reality, the percentages can be very different to that, as I'm sure you'd appreciate. But um, that value would be arrived at by titrating. So the only thing out of my impure calcium carbonate that I'm assuming will react with an acid would be the calcium carbonate itself, because it's a base, it's a carbonate. It's a metal carbonate, so it's going to react with an acid. So let's have a look at the step-by-step -step practical technique that you'd use to get the data you'd need to then do the calculation. So the first thing you do is weigh your impure sample um, and note the, the mass of it. Then you dissolve that mass completely in water, including the impurities. You can notice that um, some of the little black dots represent my pure sample, some of the little red dots represent impurities. It doesn't particularly matter exactly how much water you need to dissolve it at this point, because what you're going to do in step three is add that to a, um, a, vol a volumetric flask, such as a 250 centimetres cubed volumetric flask, and make it up to the mark using deionized water. So the next stage is to take samples of that um, amount, that 250 centimetres cubed. We call them aliquots, so A-L-I-Q-U-O-T. The little samples can actually be titrated. Uh, so a 25 centimetre cubed sample of that amount is titrated against a standard solution of acid in this case. So once you've done the titration, you then know how much HCl it took to neutralise um, the calcium carbonate in 25 centimetres cubed of your impure, um, your impure sample. So if you know that the equation for the reaction between HCl and CaCO3 is a one-to-one -one ratio, then the number of moles of HCl that you used to titrate it will tell you the number of moles of calcium carbonate in your impure sample. And then you can go back and work out from the number of moles of calcium carbonate using its MR, the mass of the pure substance, which is your calcium carbonate, in grams. And then you divide that by the mass of the impure sample, which is the amount that you weighed in step one. And then you multiply that by 100, and you get your percentage purity. So let's do a worked example. So this would be a typical A-level style question, asking you um, to use a titration um, to work out the percentage purity. 
If you look carefully, it talks about the impure sample. It talks about it being dissolved in 250 centimetres cubed of water in the same way that we talked about in the previous slide. And your 25.0 centimetre cubed aliquot, or sample, of this solution required 24.3 centimetres cubed of 0 0.110 molar, or moles per decimetre cubed, solution of HCl for complete neutralisation. So first of all, we can go straight in by looking at what we have the data for. We have the data to work out the number of moles of HCl. So we don't go anywhere near the 1.80 grams, or the 250 centimetres cubed of water, or even the 25 centimetres cubed sample. First of all, we just look at 24.3 and 0 0.110. This allows us to use N equals V times C. So just to recap, I divided 24.3 divided by 1,000 to convert into decimeters cubed, which is what's needed to do N equals V times C. So we've now got the number of moles of HCl. We can see from the equation that for every one mole of HCl, you need half that number of moles of Na2CO3. So the next thing to do is to divide the answer to step 1 by 2 to get the number of moles of sodium carbonate in your 25 centimetres cubed sample. However, what I've got to remember here is that the number of moles present in 25 centimetres cubed is not the same as the number of moles present in the original 1.80 grams of my impure sample. If you remember, looking at the question, that was actually dissolved in 250 centimetres cubed of water, which is 10 times as much as 25 centimetres cubed. So now we've got to multiply the number of moles of sodium carbonate that we've established in 25 centimetres cubed by 10 to work out the number of moles of the sodium carbonate that will be present in 250 centimetres cubed of water. So once we've worked out the number of moles of sodium carbonate that we've used by halving the number of moles of HCl, we can then convert that to the number of moles that might be present in the 250 centimetres cubed it came from by multiplying it up by 10, giving you 1.3665 times 10 to the minus 2. And therefore we can calculate the mass of pure Na2CO3 this represents by using the, the MR of Na2CO3 in step 3, the MR being 106 grams per mole. So that gives us 1.417 grams of pure Na2CO3 present in our 1.8 gram sample. So now it's just a question of changing that into a percentage. So there you have it, nice and straightforward. Remember, the key is weigh your impure sample first, then use the titration to get the number of moles of your pure substance, convert that to grams, then you've got grams of pure substance, um, over grams of impure substance, times it one by 100, you get your percentage purity. Thank you for listening.